This is a uh, brief refresher on uh, activity-based costing. We went through the ComTech problem that is inside uh, chapter three of our textbook. And the ComTech problem, as you recall, that is talking about a company that sells a DVD player and a CD player to the auto industry. And they were uh, concerned about competition. Their sales price on their CD player was apparently too high and they were not selling as many CD players as they wanted to. It was their primary product. They were losing sales to their competition. Primarily because they had based their sales price upon the cost of their product. They were using a traditional, conventional process for calculating the cost of their CD players and they weren't being as accurate as possible. So they moved towards activity-based costing where the cost structure is supposed to be more accurate. It's more accurate because they're looking at the various activities within the factory and they are more precisely allocating the resources of the factory to the individual products with, that they are making. So the assumption is, and it's correctly an accurate uh, description, that you are moving from a less accurate to a more accurate cost structure of your product by using activity-based costing. Now let's remember, there are three components to your product cost. Product cost is made up of three, three items. The first one is direct materials. The second one is direct labor, and the third one is manufacturing overhead. In chapter three, when we're talking about activity-based costing, all we're talking about is becoming more accurate with regard to the calculation of manufacturing overhead per unit, moving from traditional-based costing to activity-based costing. Traditional-based costing uses one single predetermined overhead rate to allocate or to apply overhead to our product. But when we're using activity-based costing, we're using several activity rates to apply the cost overhead to our product. So we're looking at all of these items. Let's take a moment and review what the predetermined overhead rate is. Predetermined overhead rate in a traditional model is the uh, manu estimated, estimated manufacturing overhead dollars divided by an activity base. Primarily, we're looking at direct labor hours or we're looking at direct machine hours to make this allocation. But when we move, this is, this is our traditional this is our conventional. However, when we begin to talk about activity-based costing, activity-based costing, ABC, we're looking at multiple activity rates. And these activity rates are looking at the manufacturing overhead cost pool dollars divided by an activity base. And these activity bases are many things. They could be direct labor hours. They could be direct machine hours. Or they could be many other things as well. They could be number of setups. Or they could be batches. They are multiple things, that activity base. So why don't we take a few minutes and why don't we go over exercise 3-10 again. We did this in class, but uh, some students have asked me to, to look at this again and go over it. So I'll make the assumption that you have the problem in front of you. Again, that is exercise 3-10. There was a handout in class. The first part of that problem, the first part of that problem, I was asking you to calculate cost per unit using the traditional approach. 
a single predetermined overhead rate to calculate cost per unit. And let's not forget, that's direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. In that problem, okay, in that problem, manufacturing overhead was applied on the basis of direct labor hours. And you had, so we had a predetermined overhead rate of total estimated manufacturing overhead dollars, which was $2,200,000. And the denominator value, the activity rate, was direct labor hours, or 110 thousand direct labor hours. That worked out to be twenty dollars per direct labor hour. And that's important because that's how we're going to apply manufacturing overhead. So when we were looking at the x-active product, we're trying to figure out what the manufacturing overhead per unit was. And that's going to be if we look at our formula, manufacturing overhead applied equals the predetermined overhead rate times activity. And our predetermined overhead rate is $20 per direct labor hour. The question is, what is the activity? Well, if we look at the beginning of the problem, it says it takes 1.4 direct labor hours. 1.4 direct labor hours for each product of X active. That's going to give you $28. The manufacturing overhead per unit for X active is $28. So when we add that to direct materials of $64.80, direct labor of $18.20, the $28 of manufacturing overhead results in a cost per unit of $111. And you can see that on your solution. When we look at the Pathbreaker product, Pathbreaker, and to calculate the manufacturing overhead cost per unit, we want to look at, again, the same formula, predetermined overhead rate times the activity. In that case, we're looking at $20 per direct labor hour, which is the same. But in this case, for this product, it only takes one direct labor hour. Therefore, the manufacturing overhead per unit for a pathbreaker using the traditional approach is $20. Add that once again to your direct materials or direct labor. You have a cost per unit of $84 per unit. That's the cost per unit under the traditional approach. Let's now look at the second part of the problem where I'm asking you to calculate cost per unit, but this time using activity-based costing, ABC. And I need to give you a lot of basic information. And you can see in the problem, I'm giving you four activities, and then I'm giving you the estimated cost for each one of those activities or those cost pools and then I'm giving the expected activity for X active and Pathbreaker and what you want to remember there is you essentially are calculating four activity rates or four predetermined overhead rates one for each activity and you, it should not be lost on you that the total manufacturing overhead is 2.2 million dollars but you can see from the basic data that the four cost pools add up to two million two hundred thousand dollars so you're going to calculate that very first rate you got the first rate let's call it the supporting and again this is in the solution but i'm going to show you one of them this is the supporting direct labor activity and you want to come up with that activity rate so you're going to take the total cost dollars of seven hundred ninety seven thousand $500, which is the overhead for supporting that particular cost pool, and divided by the expected activity, which in this case happens to be direct labor hours. You're going to come up with a rate of 
and 25 cents. That is your first activity. The second activity that we have listed out for you is batch setups. Let's call it setups. And again, you're going to take the cost pool, in this case $680,000, and you're going to divide it by the expected activity, which happens to be 400, 400 setups. And you're going to end up with a rate of $1,700 per setup. That's per setup. The previous one is $7.25 per direct labor hour. Those are two of the four activity rates, and you can use the same process to calculate each of those other uh, activity rates. So the next step is that you need to go ahead and calculate the total cost for X-Active and for the Pathbreaker. And again, the solution spells it out for you, but I'll go through a couple of them for you. And let's take a look first at um, the support, supporting direct labor. And again, you're going to do something for X-Active. And you're going to do one for Pathbreaker. First one is for support. And again, this is based upon direct labor hours, and our rate there is $7.25. So you're going to have that first calculation, and you're going to have $7.25 times the activity for X Active, which is $35,000. 35,000 direct labor hours. That's going to result in $253,000, $253,750. You do the same calculation for Pathbreaker, you're going to have $7.25 per direct labor hour, but in this case it's 75,000 direct labor hours. Do that math, it works out to be $543,750. That's the allocation of that particular cost pool. And what I think is important for you to realize is that if you add these two numbers together, the amount that's allocated towards X-Active and the amount that's allocated to Pathbreaker, you're going to realize that this total, if you add the two together, is $797. $500, which is the amount of the estimated overhead for that first cost pool. You're going to do this same math for the remaining three of the cost pools and breaking it down. And as you can see from the solution that I provided to you, you're going to end up with $1,021,875 of total cost total manufacturing overhead cost that's allocated towards X-Active and $1,178,125 that's allocated toward Pathbreaker. Total of those two numbers, once again, is $2,200,000. That's the total overhead, but you have to come up with the manufacturing overhead cost per unit. So then you need to go to the top of the problem and the basic information that I provided to you at the very top and it says, the fourth line down, estimated annual production and sales for X-Active is 25,000 units. And for Pathbreaker is 75,000 units. That is the denominator that you need to divide the manufacturing overhead cost that you just calculated to arrive at the $40.88 for X-Active per unit and Pathbreaker 1571. Once you add the direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead together, you're going to arrive at a total cost for X-Active, $123.88 and $79.71 for Pathbreaker. And at the bottom of the second page, what I've done for you is I have summarized the cost per unit for X-Active and Pathbreaker, first using the traditional approach and secondly using the activity-based costing method. 
Now, you say, that's a great exercise in math. But what's the point? Why are we doing this? We're doing this, once again, as I said, because this particular company is having some competition. The competition is essentially selling the same exact product, the boot called Pathbreaker, for a lower sales price than uh, Rocky Mountain Company here. So, once again, Rocky Mountain has established their sales price based upon what they thought it cost to make their product. Using a traditional, conventional method of calculating the cost per unit, they thought their cost for the Pathbreaker boot was $84. They thought the cost of the Pathbreaker boot was $84. Their strategy, their process, their calculation to arrive at the sales price was they wanted to have a 50% markup on cost. 50% markup on cost. So they added $42 to the cost of their product. They arrived at a sales price of $126. The question is, is this cost the most accurate cost they can have possible. Well, we just learned it's not. By using activity-based costing, they realized that the true cost of their product, once they look at the particular activities within their business, the true cost of their product was what? 79.71 using activity-based costing. Again, this was the traditional approach. The idea is that by moving from traditional to activity-based costing, they have a more accurate depiction of what it costs to make their product. So they have a more accurate number. What can they do? They still can apply their 50% markup on cost. Their markup now is $39.86. They have a new sales price of $119.57. If their competition is selling the boot for $119.99, you can see that you might want to make a recommendation to drop the sales price. They can drop the sales price to $119.57 and they can be competitive with their competition. Activity-based costing gives them a more accurate cost upon which they can determine their sales price. So my question to you, in many marketing majors especially, the question I have for you is by lowering the sales price, will they sell more pairs of boots? Especially if you have an advertising campaign that promotes the fact that they are selling the same exact boot, but they are less expensive than the competition. They certainly will. So sales volume will undoubtedly increase. And what we're going to realize when we get to chapter 5 is that we are going to quantify the impact on net operating income when sales volume goes up. What is the impact on net income if sales volume goes up? We all know it's going to increase, but the question is by how much? What is the impact? So that is... Uh, that's a summary of what we did in Chapter 3, and more specifically focusing in on Exercise 3-10 that we did in class. I certainly hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.